As strongly as you feel those things, though, there was a way that you testified and you were not an angry African woman, right? Or an angry woman because you also thought about the way you said things. And so when people are angry with what is going on in their lives, is there an approach you might suggest that you can use to move toward the goals you really want and to have an impact? You cannot be angry with the society because even the people think differently from the way you think is because of lack of information, lack of uh, exposure, and also the way they have been brought up to think. Uh, for instance, you hear people say this rhetoric that uh, women are enemies of themselves. We cannot be enemies of ourselves because every woman is struggling in our own space uh, to raise the children. She is struggling to you know, bring dignity to her life. She is looking after her elderly parents. She is looking after some sick people around. There is so much being required of her. So you understand that kind of a woman. She is struggling. Everybody is struggling. Even women in positions like I am, we are all struggling because you have relatives, everybody who wants a piece of you. So you cannot be annoyed with the society. It's just that we have to fix things that are not working right and change the attitude and let everybody realize that um, when I'm in this position that I am in, I've been given a lot of power, authority, and privilege uh, to change things. So I'm supposed to be sympathetic and have empathy. I, when I was doing this interview, I was a court of appeal judge. How many people are court of appeal judges? Mm -hmm. I was so grateful for having that privilege of serving in the court of appeal and having the privilege of appearing before these cameras to be interviewed for the position of the Chief Justice. So I cannot be hungry on anybody who is asking me a question to test my ability to withstand a lot of pressure for this office because that is what it, it, it requires. And so Martha from the village walking in her bare feet, never imagining that she would be a Supreme Court Justice you still feel those people that are walking with their bare feet in the village, those people that are cleaning houses, those people that have not been as fortunate as you, that have not had those blessings. And why is that so important? Because you it, mentioned the word empathy. It is absolutely uh, important. And if, uh, Judge, you've read my, the vision for the judiciary that we are implementing, um, social transformation through access to justice. The trajectory in my vision, which is different from the other frameworks that were used by my predecessors, is that it looks at empowering the people. Because until we empower those people and give them a voice and give them an agency for them to think through the circumstances under which they are living and think positively of how they can change their circumstances and even know their rights and seek remedies when their rights are violated, then we cannot talk about justice. So we must ensure there is justice for those people. That's why we talk about reducing the distances between the people and the courts, uh, leveraging on technology. And when it comes to technology, many people argue that uh, poor people don't have access to uh, the gadgets, the, the, the smartphones or hair time. So we are partnered even with the government to use the Uduma Center because the government is um, 
as a project of ensuring access to internet mm -hmm. connectivity uh, in the what they call the Unduma Center, where you go and get all the government services. So one of the government services to get in the Unduma Center is judicial services. You can go to Unduma Center and file. You can go to Unduma Center and access a virtual hearing or you know make whatever application you want you want there so those people down there must be supported must be able to go to school and when they go to school they must be able to be supported to complete their school and to go on and remain in school as much as possible and then for you Humility as a judge is so important, not arrogance. And bringing the judges closer to the everyday Kenyans and standing in their shoes, uh, your humility is really just profound. The, your gratitude for what you have. And are you also a believer that when you receive such blessings, it is an obligation to give back? Absolutely. We ha I have no choice but to inspire my colleagues, uh, judges, that when you see a litigant who has come to court, uh, say they have filed a case, you cannot just strike it out because you don't know what it costs that litigant to appear in that court. You cannot just adjourn it and say, come tomorrow, come six months later because probably they sold their only possession be it a goat or a chicken for them to get bus fare to come to court mm -hmm. and if it's far as i know some places are far they probably slept outside the shop they came yesterday spend the night outside the shop to be able to appear in court in the morning for the judge now to say you are case adjourned or for them to find a notice that the judge or the magistrate is away on other duties. So we must feel for those litigants and put ourselves in the shoes of that litigant and ask yourself, if I am the one who was coming to court on this matter, what would I have wanted done unto me? So you do unto that litigant what you would have expected them and to so, do for you. So your, your, your legacy, what would you like it to be? Oh, I have a big dream, Judge Williams, for the, for the judiciary. I am hoping that in the next five years, we can actually empower 20 million, and that is the adult population of this country, on how to access justice through the multi-door approaches that uh, we have employed. When they have a problem, they can use the court and next mediation, mediate, negotiate their cases. They can go to the small claims courts. We hope they'll be all over because we are, this country is also made up of uh, SMEs, small business, medium-sized mm -hmm. businesses. You're doing those businesses that uh, the jurisdiction is of that small claims court. You can go and sort it out there. You can use the alternative justice system that we are using uh, now and promoting very vigorously. And uh, you can also use alternative um, ADL, uh, dispute resolution mechanisms that uh, we have. I look to once ensuring that we have the right infrastructure. We have courts in every county, high courts, and magistrates' courts in every sub-county, uh, so that people do not have to travel many kilometers. That we will have these mobile, I mean, um, virtual courts as well, so that people can log in. Uh, because a court is not the place. The court is where you get justice. You can also get it virtually. You don't have to walk there. And we look to having an infrastructure that can support these 50 million Kenyans and uh, 13 trillion economy 
So we need to build infrastructure. We realize we don't have a Supreme Court. The Constitution gave us a Supreme Court uh, in 2010. And almost 12 years down the line, we have not built one. So my legacy is to build a Supreme Court, build a center for mediation for the region so that Nairobi becomes the center for mediation. People don't have to go to London or Dubai. Mm -hmm. They can stop in Nairobi and it can be a big one-stop shop for co commercial justice as well because we want to make uh, Kenya a commercial center because it attracts a lot of businesses, it attracts a lot of international community here, and also build a world-class uh, Kenya Judiciary Academy that is not only for Kenya, but the whole of Africa. You mentioned that I am very interested in the regional uh, bodies and also um, international. I'm quite bilateral. Uh, since I became Chief Justice, I've hosted the East Africa Forum for judges and um, also the South uh, Sandic uh, Judges, Forum for Judges. So far, I have hosted about 20 Chief Justices in a span of one year, 16 of them at a go, which has never happened before. So we are trying to come together as Africa and uh, encourage one another in the things that we are doing to improve access to justice, uh, improve respect for the rule of law and the constitutionalism, to build our nascent, you know, our fragile democracies, uh, so that if we have a strong judiciary, each one of us in Africa, then it will strengthen even our democracy. And we are thinking if we can embrace technology, because the last conference we had here in Kenya for the South Africa Forum for Chief Justices, we were talking about uh, internet and technology governance. Uh, you know, technology is a good for us. Internet is a good mm -hmm. for all of us, but it also has problems. It's just like climate the way we are talking about, uh, you know, cleaning our environment and making it palatable for all of us and not allowing anybody to destroy our environment, even internet, uh, you know, it has problems. So we have to work together so that uh, we protect the internet because it's for the common good. It's not only for the tech companies, it's also for us. So we came together and we were all in agreement if we can embrace technology uh, as an enabler to access to justice. It will speed up some of our cases if we uh, adopt these smart door approaches as well. We clear our backlog of cases. Smart door approaches, of course, include the pre bargaining and all these other court annex mediation and uh, or this alternative justice system, small claims courts. Uh, if we can adopt all this in Africa, uh, we can clear our backlog and we can actually reflog and join the developed world in terms of uh, access to justice and defense of the rule of law and constitutionalism. And so I know you're also working with Barefoot Law yes. in Uganda. We where are. We, we, for that, we, for a kiosk, right for the kiosk, <laughs> because they yes. have developed a system using ten different uh, methods to communicate to the public using technology, yes. and, and so innovative. And when you said you had very big dreams, there's no doubt in my mind, and there should be no doubt in the minds of any Kenyan that when you have a big dream and you have a strategy you help impossible dreams come true because mm. that's what you've done throughout your yes. career. Yeah. That is who you are. Yes. And that's why we're so grateful that you were willing to sit with us this afternoon to share Martha from the village barefoot and her journey, how she became a chief justice. You are such a visionary and so iconic. And I have to say that 
people ask me often, why do you keep coming back? And why do you keep coming back to Kenya? And it is because of the light in your eyes mm -hmm. and that commitment to justice that has always been there and burned brightly, not only in your eyes, but everyone I've worked with here. Yeah. That inspires me Thank to you. do what I have to do to try to give back to what I know is my homeland. And so I am so grateful, Chief, that you uh, agreed to this and agreed to this interview. Thank you for having me. And thank you also for the sacrifices you have made, uh, the many trips you have made here uh, to train us, to encourage us. Uh, you know, sometimes things look very grim until you also came and uh, right into the room to say, look, it's possible to reduce this uh, backlog of cases using this free bargaining. Um, sharing experiences uh, that work from your court. Um, it's been very, very profound. And we are also very, very grateful as a country uh, to have you. Uh, no wonder we named you Atieno and also Wangu. Right, <laughs> right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Actually, that, that's my second name, which of course is just like my initials in the U.S. Anne A. Williams. Yes. So it's so fitting. It's so fitting. And so I wanted to finish that part because one of the things I know is that you can be a strong, powerful woman and be cute. Be cute. And we talked about that really with Nancy Barraza, how important it is for women to show their feminine side, to dress well, to embrace who they are as a woman and still be respected as an intellectual. Mm -hmm. And she wanted you to share sort of that pack you made at FIDA about how women would present themselves to the public and to their clients. Actually, FIDA made us who we are. FIDA invested a lot in us. Uh, finding uh, women, who are achievers to come and speak to us, women like you, uh, to come and inspire us that we don't have to apologize for who we are. We need to celebrate every day and celebrate ourselves because when you live in a chauvinistic um, world like we did, uh, sometimes you are made to apologize for being a lawyer. Uh, sometimes I remember when we were in Bombas of Kenya negotiating the constitution, we had worked very hard to ensure that women came from the districts to come as, uh, as delegates to the Bombas of Kenya to speak as women. And I remember one time we were told, you women go and select a few women to come and join a committee. And when we went to that gathering, they told us, we don't want city women, we don't want the rich women, we want women from um, the rural areas. And you know, that is the only time I say, I think I raised my voice to say, look, look at me, I'm as rural as they can be. And I'm um, elite, I'm educated, but I'm not elitist. Because we've been with you, talking with you, sitting on the, on the grass, eating sugar cane, eating uh, sweet potato in the village, talking about women's rights and how we can empower women to take positions of leadership. So now that we are in this table, we cannot divide ourselves between the, those who came from the rural and those who, women are not homogeneous, we know, but uh, we have come here for a purpose, to make the constitution. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, we need always to celebrate ourselves, wherever we are, even if we are rural women, even if we are city women, even if we are uh, rich women who are educated, but I'm educated, but I'm not a elitist. I'm a elite, but not a elitist, because my clients are ordinary people 
the people who come to court, the litigants, uh, most of them, those people from the rural areas. And that's where I grew up. That's where my heart is. Uh, so it is good to wake up in the morning and give thanks for who you are and see how you can project yourself in the best way possible. Celebrate yourself. Make yourself happy. And when you look at yourself, feel happy about yourself. You're not doing it for anybody else, but for yourself. Um, look good, feel good, dress well. Uh, even if it's uh, these clothes we wear, these are our own clothes, our own fabrics, mm -hmm. made by our own people, and stitched by our own tailors. <laughs> mm -hmm. But celebrate them as well. You know, that's why I wear them, so that I celebrate our own our own fabrics and our own tailors, yes, uh, you know, who make them for us. And I have the final question is, your brother, who used to wait for you at the gate, did he ever get to see you become the Chief Justice? Unfortunately not, because he died um, in February last year. But he got to see you become a Court of Appeals judge? He saw me become the Court and of Appeals judge. And what did he say? He was always celebrating me. A very good man. Uh, when we went to bury him, it's just when I applied for the Chief Justice's position. And I remember during his funeral, the pastor who performed the burial rites prayed for me to become the Chief Justice because I shared what he had done for me um, in my eulogy. Uh, but they all celebrate me, the whole 18 of them, they celebrate me. <laughs> they are proud of me. They are all very, actually. They, they don't believe it. They are like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Martha from the village. Yes, Chief they, Justice. they actually look at it and they're like, is it true? <laughs> they come to see me and I tell them, yes, it is true. <laughs> <laughs> we serve a faithful God who can lift you uh, from any position. That's right. Yes, yes he lifted you have... me from the trenches of poverty. Right, the that's right. And, Li and, and you lift up and you reach back. Yes, and, and you reach you back. You must always you... reach back reach to that back. village, yes, yeah. and see how we can transform it, how we can encourage every child there to aim high. We worked very hard to promote the rights of women, to promote women in leadership advocated very, very seriously that uh, we needed women in decision making. Needed, women needed to sit in tables where decisions affecting them are being made. 